Hi YouTube. I hope you're doing good. I'm going to roll some cigarettes and just talk to you. Also, um, okay, I, I know now that I can, uh, I think I can read something here. Or, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to blink you off. I, it, I'm going to share a video in my description by Professor Sam Vognin, I think is how you pronounce his name. He's showing that there's two dozen studies that prove that social justice and political movements, well, basically, they've hidden these studies that prove that people like with uh, far-left agendas and these type of organizations such, such as um, uh, political leaders and they're narcissistic, they're psychopathic, and, um, uh, geez, what was it? Okay, let me see. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, now, now, okay, I, I'm trying to scroll it beneath where I'm at. Forget it, sorry about that. But anyway, my point being that, um, He's got proof that, the, I mean, these studies have been hidden. I, I heard about it, too. Um, oh, that they have, like, politicians have ADHD. If you listen to um, Professor Sam and his qualifications on uh, psychopathy in people, I mean, is really deep. He's a total expert. Um, it's a 50 minute video he's got called don't compete for victimhood, you know, like these, um, gee, poor me, I'm a man wearing a dress. So either you're going to feel sorry for me and tell the whole world what I think you have to call me or with, uh, pure narcissistic nature, I'm going to call you names and treat you poorly because you refuse to go along with my narcissistic fantasy, basically. This is just like total proof of what these personalities are out of these people, you know? And I've been personally attacked, so finding, um, uh, professional studies of several people, not just one voice, but hundreds of voices coming together in the uh, mental health community in correlation, in concordance with each other and saying, look, this is what this is, and we're not going to tolerate it because we don't lie, and we're not going to help you lie to the American people just to get your misfit way. And that's the way that is. So finding proof and sharing the proof with other people is a really big deal because we're trying to protect the younger generations from all this. So it's a big deal. I uh, did have chicken last night, but I also had deep fried mushrooms they were excellent but i'm allergic to them and i got cramps leg cramps from them mostly in my feet <laughs> not not so much my legs but um yeah just weird things potatoes will do that to me um also i mean mushrooms are a fungus and potatoes are of the nightshade family and can cause people problems. So um, this is part of the b debates going on within my own mind of different symptoms for dif different mental illnesses that become physical. For instance, they say they, the maybe not, um, very well-informed professionals say 
that um like restless leg syndrome is a part of schizophrenia. Well, I know for mine, I got smashed by my horse and had my spinal cord pulled. So, and I have a separated pelvis and a hip that has been damaged. So, no, my restless leg syndrome is from injuries and allergies. But anyway, far from a psychopic issue. And I kind of wonder, too, and even like overheating at night. Wow, isn't that a cool thing to tell all these? Um, now there's, God, more than half the one. Half the world is, well, I would say probably about a third of the world is um, in menopause. Isn't that a scary thing to think? Or at least a sixth of it solid, <laughs> you know. But if you look at, a, at a, um, two out of every six people have uh, trouble regulating their temperature, well, well that's a big, big part of the population in the world, <laughs> you know? So anyway, just some things I'm wondering out loud, you know? So, yeah. But yeah, these studies done um, proving that these people are mentally and criminally. I mean, like I've said before, okay, so um, psychologically, I can't prove you're evil, but I can prove you're insane, you know? So take your pick, you know? What's criminal, insane, or evil? Mm, well, by description, who cares? The outcome's the same, right? Criminal's a criminal, whether you call, name it evil or whatever, you know. But, yeah. So it's good to hear other professionals um, standing up for what's right on this planet and not caving to the system. As a matter of fact, the ones that don't cave are the ones that are being either attacked or ignored. Go figure, huh? Why would that be, huh? Well, I suppose if you can't make any money off of um, telling the truth, it would be more profitable to lie. So, yeah. I had gone out and made a bonfire last night. Doug was out there working on a vehicle, and I thought, well, um, that'll smoke the bugs out. And it does. It cuts down on them. I used to almost make a bonfire every day and throw a, a wetter log on there and just let it smolder for my horse instead of putting bug spray on her. I mean, I didn't mind getting the bug spray for her. That wasn't the issue. It was that it's poison anyway. And, um, it's a little more pleasant to have, like, a pine tree smoldering on there or whatever would, you know, smoke. So, keeping them away. So, I'm going to do that tomorrow, and I'm going to barbecue some. I don't need a lot of pork, but I've got some in the freezer that I've had there forever. And Doug likes uh, pork steak and cream peas, but it's best if you put it on the grill and then use mesquite to smoke it for the flavor. So I'll probably start it with some ochre maple and then throw some mesquite on there and give it that flavor. So that's what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. <laughs> so, oh, and I did try some of my pickles last night that I had made those beets and cucumbers onions I had like one piece of onion because I'm not supposed to have those but they were great <laughs> Doug ate like a whole half his plate was like um he called it his salad was my pickled stuff you know which is 
really healthy, you know, good, good for him to eat. He ate pretty healthy this morning, too. A lot of times he used to make like a bowl of oatmeal and pour uh, either canned milk, carnation milk, or um, milk and brown sugar and all kinds of butter. But like this morning, he had a handful of uh, smoked almonds, you know, so that's that's like an improvement. And he's really, really lost some weight. He's looking good, so, you know, working hard. Pretty hard. Oh, we got so much to do around here. It's like a never-ending story. But you know if you've lived out in the country what it's like. You, um, yeah, it's different. <laughs> but keeps you busy. <laughs> Even when you're busy, it keeps you busy, busier. <laughs> Yeah, he was working on that uh, short box Dodge that we have. He put some really uh, comfortable seats. I think they're out of a Bronco or a Ranger, but they're they're like a captain seat. They're really nice, a nice um, gray velour. I'll show it to you someday um, when I feel like it. <laughs> so. So it's going to be a kind of a light electric blue with gray interior. So that'll be pretty little truck. So Doug asked me a question and about vehicles. And I thought I knew and I second guessed myself. He said, what's the only country in the world, you know, that makes vehicles that doesn't make a pickup? And I'm thinking, thinking, and my first thought was Russia. And then I rethought myself, and I said, what did I say? Um, uh, Germany. And Or I should have known better, too, because I think they have, like, utility vehicles in any way. It was Russia. I couldn't believe it. It's like I knew it, and then I second-guessed myself, you know? <laughs> what a dingbat, right? That, that should teach me not to listen to that second voice or second-guess myself, you know? If it were like a, a voice coming in at me from, like, mind-to-skull technology or something, uh, or 5G, be like, okay, I know that wasn't my thought, but yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was funny that I had to rethink myself and get it wrong. I've done that on tests, too, before. It's like second-guess myself when I had studied for it, and I knew it, but then I'd let my anxiety over the test get the best of me. I had to work through that big time in order to excel at all. <laughs> you know, stop second guessing once you learn it, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. It's kind of a gloomy day. It really cooled off last night, which was crazy, too. Um, Like about 55 degrees. Yeah, Fahrenheit here. Um, and I did tell Doug, I said, I made a bonfire for you and your little kitty. He's got this one, white one is a grandson of my one I call Yeti. And Doug started calling him George. And I said, so I made a bonfire for you and George. Later in the evening, I looked out and there was George and Doug enjoying that bonfire. So, yeah, they he sat down in a chair and just chilled after he likes that anyway used to uh when he was drinking 
tell me about like different faces that the fire would make at him and the demons that he'd see in there or whatever. Not demons, but demon. And I go, yeah, I know. I've seen your face in there before. Whatever. <laughs> I know. I know, like, <laughs> Professor Sam has a thing like, um, yeah, everybody thinks they live with uh, Satan himself. But what if I do? <laughs> what then? How do I prove that? Although all of our thoughts that we put out in the ether are, they're there and people gather them. But if you know somebody's actual energy not only followed you around all of your life, but, um, but you can't prove it, but he's actually even as much as said so. But I mean, I can't prove it, whatever, you know, the <clears throat> Masonic demonistic nature <coughs> of the people that tried to condition my big brain to their willpower. And it's not a joke, it's a real thing that happens to people out on this planet, you know. It's real. I'm telling you, there's people that were placed in your life intentionally, just to, by Satan, orchestrated, just to keep you at a standstill. And this is all real. It's real. You know. could think, well, how could he do that, like, ahead of time? Easy, the same way God designed you, knowing you ahead of time, and your personality. And it says in the scriptures, I, yeah, I knew you in the womb. I knew you before the foundations of the earth. You know? That's something to think about, you know. So I actually, even if we do something, whether it's good or bad, and God already knows what we're going to do, <laughs> that's a trip. Well, you know, there is that intuition thing, too. Um, not just even knowing your kid, but knowing probably how they're going to react to different things too and you know with with human psychology and whatever but it's a lot easier to know um somebody from your own family that you know really well and you can almost predict how they're gonna act or the things they're gonna do i heard something now this is a new one on me that um you know people were calling everybody karens and I mean, except for Karens that actually act like Karens, you know, that was sad. But now they call the male counterpart of that Billies, <laughs> which is extremely funny to me because I have a loved one that um, is getting close to a person named Billy, and he might really be a Billy. And then I have another friend that has a brother named William they call Billy. And he's a Billy for real. And, uh, yeah. A lot of, lot of Williams. Well, two. Um, my adopted dad and my brother, Wallace William Sr. and Jr. So, I don't know. Just... Chili billies, yeah. <laughs> Billy goats. <laughs> but, yeah. So I just thought that was kind of funny. And then I saw a video that um, JP Reacts put out, but I didn't watch it. But, um, like, 
what it is to be a Chad. I think it was some sort of insult it looked like to, uh, I would say, kind of a feminized inner city type guy. You know, that was my take on the whole thing. And I thought, nah, it wasn't the right time. It was a day or so ago. It's like, I don't want to know what a Chad is today. Not today. <laughs> Maybe another day, you know. But <laughs> the only Chad I knew, oh no, I know two. One's a meth head that we didn't know and tried to do some business with, and he ended up being a shady character. And another one was a little kid. Oh, no, no, that was Chaz was his name. So we're, there was this family of little children that I babysat one time. I was like 17 years old. I'm in the house, and they were outside. Um, I thought they were outside playing, like, tag or something, but things got quiet. So I went out, and I go, what are y'all doing? And here's like four or five of them. And only one of them wasn't like related. And um, they're laying on a blanket. And they told me they were moon bathing. And I sat there and talked to them until they quit moon bathing. But um, I can't remember if any of them had any of their clothes off or what it was. It was just entirely weird. I think that was like what it was. I don't want to even think now about that. But anyway, that was Chaz. Yeah, Charles. They call him Chaz. Weird. How do you explain that to the parents when they come home? E. I didn't want nothing to do with any of them after that. They asked me how the kids were, and I said, um, I guess they're doing what they do is what I said. If I had been more mature, I would have pulled the mother aside and said, look, this is what happened. You know? But I didn't have the guts to do that at that point in my life. So. And I, it wasn't about the money because I was working at a hospital. I didn't need the money. You know, <laughs> just did it for a favor. You know, anyway, I think so they could go out because it, they, um, she had gotten in a car accident with a cow. Well, it was a truck accident. She was in a, oh, three quarter ton Ford four by going down a country road out in Montana where we have like cattle guards that the trucks can go over, but the cows can't. So you'll be going down. So you really, really, when you're out and about out there, a lot of places could be herds of cattle. So it'll have like cattle crossing signs. Well, one did cross right in front of her and went through her windshield. And let me see, it broke. No, he was driving. It broke his neck and injured her back really bad. And they had some kids, like, in there with them. And the kids didn't get hurt from, I think, oh, the one boy did break his arm. But, I mean, for having, like, probably a thousand-pound spear come through your windshield, you know, that could have been way worse but it, I mean it was bad enough but so they had been injured for a really long time and were go, gonna go out on a date so I was watching their kids you know yeah. I bought a really oh no I was gonna say I bought a really good car from them I sold them a really good car <laughs> after their truck had that happen. <laughs> a station wagon that I had. 
I used to go to auctions and then I'd find, well, like I got a motorcycle one time. I got a Honda 90 Street and Trail for like $350 and, and it was a, that was in 76 and it was a 74, I think, or five. It was like, like really hardly any miles on it at all. And nobody wanted to bid on it because they couldn't get it started. And all it needed was a spark plug. And I was pretty sure on that. And I was right. And a few other really cool things that I found at auctions, you know, like that. So, yeah. Oh, I had fun on that bike. I should have kept it, too. Oh, well. I have a bunch. Of, we have mini bikes around here. But I traded mine with Doug, and he supposed, was supposed to be getting mine going. I traded him a blue Cushman I had for a, um orange. I think it's got a Rupp motor. But... Yeah, I think it needs a carburetor on it. Something pretty simple. I could probably even fix myself. But we've been so busy with everything. and, and uh, We got a go-kart that we got for grandkids. But no grandkids around, really. We had one go-kart. And Doug was like... It had a roll bar. But he was like rolling that thing over. And that was crazy. Yeah, just displaying his craziness. I mean, I'm kind of a daredevil, but he's just like, it used to be almost horrible because he wouldn't really pre-think things, or if he did, it was just the vibration of the whole thing that would make things not turn out well. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. That would really be considered somewhat crazy, to put it mildly. But yeah. Yeah, it was, I, I freaked out a little bit when he did roll it over, but I could see it happening when he did, and I knew he wasn't going to get hurt. Unless he had like his arms or something hanging out when he was going over, but come around the corner too quick, you know, and um, could do like, a, you know, um, what they call like a lazy J or just whipping that thing around from like going forward back to where you came, just whipping it around and uh. I would do that if I had a Dodge D50 with a half a Hemi in there, um, half a hemispherical motor, a six-cylinder, but it was a pepped-up sport truck. I'd flip that thing around, like, in circles and just go take off. I had this one spot. Okay, this, now, I'll, I'll just, I'll, all right, here goes. You want to hear how I would reprimand my kids? Okay. They'd be arguing in the truck. So I'd go find like a sandy parking lot. And just there yapping, yapping, yapping. Would you please be quiet? Please be quiet. Okay, not listening to me. All right. And go in there and whip it. Do shitties like about three times in a row and then just take off. And guess what? They shut the hell up. So that's how I would uh, deal with my sons getting totally out of line and disrespecting me. So I don't know if you would consider that psychotic, but I, ca I call it good parenting without brutalizing your child. Yeah, I might have put the fear of God in them, but they knew I was a good driver. They knew I was in total control was the thing. That's about the bottom line right there. That's why I did it. Not only because I am a good driver, but I would use it 
kind of as a punishment, you know? So, yeah. In other words, next time we go somewhere, you're going to shut up when I'm driving. So we don't get into an accident or anything, you know? But And then actually they sort of thought it was fun too. Yeah, they did. They'd tell you that. Do you remember when you did that or this? Or of course I remember. I did it. Why would I forget? Do you remember why I did it? That's the question. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I grew up uh, racing snowmobiles. And I started, actually, the first time I tried to drive, I was four. But I actually started driving by myself at nine because my mom got sick. And if we had gone out to where we had a country place, um, go out to the lake. And if we were, I was out there alone with her, if my dad was out fishing, if something happened, if I had to get her to the doctor, I was able to drive course the first time with power brakes and that was in um let me see I think it was 10 yeah with that car because it was a Ford 68 Ford Galaxy with power brakes I almost put my dad's head through the windshield with those but I learned how to um baby the brakes so I could break it you know and <laughs> so But anyway, then I just learned how to drive all kinds of large machinery and all kinds of weird things in my life. So, yeah, kind of fortunate there in one way, you know. Oh, yeah. And then working on my own stuff. Because I had to. <laughs> it was either that or walk. You know. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you just have to command respect where none is given. You know, it's like you just really, that old saying. Show them where the cow ate the calf. It's like, look, if you're going to act like a snack, and this might sound kind of narcissistic, but it is true. If you're going to act like a snack when it comes to morals and virtues and everything, I'm going to treat you like one, <laughs> you know. That's a fact. That is my nature, you know. It It takes a bit. I give people chances, you know. Um, yeah, I don't, don't come right out of the gate and start attacking people for no reasons, you know. So, like with Lionel Nation, I didn't start getting pissed till he started pounding his fist, insisting that I'm going to call some man a she. And if I don't, I'm some kind of bad person if I don't do that. Well, now I have proof from mental health professionals that tell you that you're actually narcissistic twat. Excuse me, people. And I have proof of that. So anyway. Pound your fist at me. You're lucky you don't do that shit to my face. You never fucking would. Not even close. Not even close. There's been a few people that tried, and they do regret it. One way or another, you're either going to be my friend, or you might just respect me because you aren't my friend. But the strength that I will exhibit in the face of that, or you're going to be my enemy, and you're going to get the short end of the stick because I'm not backing down on my virtues for anybody. Not one iota, not ever. No matter what anybody says, 
And I knew there'd be proof. I mean, I had heard of these studies coming up, but I didn't, and I had read the one in particular um, that was, uh, excuse me, a study from uh, all kinds of professionals analyzing the same thing in a group, a total study done by professionals of a group a group of professionals analyzing these situations and to know that two dozen studies on the narcissistic and psychopathic nature of those that are pushing um, false rhetoric on the rest of us pure flat out in lies in the mental health field and forcing us they want us to admit something that isn't true and trying to force us into this situation so they can go on their merry way with their lies for the whole world and make money off of those lies. In the face of that, I will physically fight you. I just, whoever, whatever, I don't care if you're evil. If you're if you're pushing something that is a lie, I challenge you to a sparring match out in my yard, fucking period. I don't care who you are. You want to face righteousness with your evil? Well, then let's just do that. Bring it on. And I I I tell you where I live in every video, every single video. I'm very easy to find. So. I'm not kidding. I do not care. And I don't have fear like that. And we'll see who has fear. You confront righteous with your evil shit, and I'll show you the fear of God. I promise you that. And that is, that's beyond motherly instincts. That's uh, for the righteous people of all the world and these lies that are being pushed on us by these bastards out there. These lying, flipping bastards. And if you're a bastard like me, don't take any offense. No. If they can bastardize the whole mental health community and lie and trick people into, into pushing falsehoods and then condemning and putting people in danger with their lies, well, I'm going to confront that. I'm going to confront your violence <clears throat> with the reality of you're going to get what you fucking give. You want to get violent with me? You want to threaten violence with me? You want to say my name's in your book? Tell me that twice? I told you, your name's taken out of my book. not taken out of my mouth because you're a goddamn liar, but it's taken out of my book. So anyway. Yeah, I feel like that. So if you eat your Wheaties, as they say, which they totally suck, they're so full of sugar and they're garbage. But if you ate your Wheaties and you think you're young and froggy and you want to confront somebody with God in her heart and as a expert martial artist that is sick of fucking lies, you want to confront your lies with my truth in a sparring match anytime. Anytime, even if I'm not feeling good, and that might even be worse for people because then my restraint may be a little less and my self preservation will be even stronger. So I say once again, bring it on, you know, fucking smack your hand. This dude, 
oh, he didn't do like that. He's like this, you know. It's like, okay, whatever, whatever. Here, give me your face. <laughs> I'll pulverize it with my foot, actually. I'm not going to hurt my hand on nobody. Not even close. Actually, with a keto, most people wouldn't even get close enough to even put nothing on me. But if you've ever studied Aikido or Aikido, Hakido, Hopkido, those type of arts, yeah, they work. Look into them. <laughs> That's using, it's like a ancient judo. It's like my base. Um, And then going into karate and taekwondo and some other arts, like kung fu and whatever. But base things, um, just using normal momentum against them works wonders. You you would be amazed at that. That is an art. It's beautiful when some monster comes towards you and then you use their momentum on them and they're just because they don't know what you're going to do because they didn't study that art, you know, so they don't have a clue what's about ready to happen, you know. That's why I'm fearless, because I'm trained, you know. I used to be afraid. That kind of went away. Many, many decades ago. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And even when I wasn't afraid, I was more passive and um, didn't want any confrontations. And I really don't anyway, but when it comes down to liars threatening me and threatening other people, when you got some mother out here threatening women and children and saying, you're going to call this, you're a bigot if you don't call this man a she. I'll bite you on that. I don't care. I don't care. Especially a man acting like that in front of women and ch children. You do need to be pulverized. There's not a doubt in my mind. So for me to even ask God to put you in your place, you're lucky. I, it only goes that far. Because if I was a young person, I probably would have walked out this door and been where you are very shortly. And I have done those type of things, and I still might, so just do not push me. You, these stupid fuckers need to wake up before they run into somebody that's going to do something like break their fucking arm or something, you know. You want to punch your arm? Okay, let me rip it off your body, you little bitch. You know, or big one, whatever. And no offense to big, strong, skilled people. I'm not putting you down. I'd rather be on your side than against you. I'm just fighting this dark cabal of these fucking creatures, that's all. You know? And they don't play nice. You know? When they're connected um, through and through. Yeah. It's, these people aren't playing, and neither am I, you know. So. I'll stop for a minute and talk to you a little bit, and then close her down. But, yeah, it's important that the, these studies are shared so the whole world knows that um, mental health professionals are speaking out against this and the media isn't covering it, you know, because when it makes no sense biologically and they're lying about it and then forcing normal human beings to go along with their insanity, that's where it ends, right there, you know. They're disgusting. They actually the people 
sticking up for the insane people are more disgusting than the insane people themselves. It makes it doubly more disgusting because you're pretending to be normal, or they are. That's really disturbing. It's like you're just as off, but you won't admit it. At least the weirdos, they're freaking admitting it. That is true. I, you know, gotta at least say, hey, at least you're not lying about your regressed deviant behavior. I mean, you know, well, you say that's who you are if you think so, you know, but don't try and make me say the same thing, you know. So it is the people that are sticking up for them that are actually worse than the ones that are doing it. At least as far as I feel that way. You know? But please, please share that information. Look look at that video. Don't compete for victimhood. And understand that there's, this needs to get out, that there have been studies done on the things that they're trying to push us as normal. And, okay, like, like um, Professor Sam goes into talking about... Uh, political leaders having ADHD, typically, where they have a hard time even studying new information or researching anything for any reason and keeping their focus on these things for us, you know. This is a major problem, you know, and it's a real problem, you know. They're sadistic. And that's kind of funny if you think about it because um, just the hyperness of an attention deficit disorder and you wonder why you'll watch people in, like, Parliament in, um, like, uh, Canada or the Congress in the United States. Those people can't sit down and actually have a conversation. They constantly interrupt each other. Now, if you you're, have, like, a close friend or a family member and you're both in a conversation, you should be able to go like this, interject something, like, excuse yourself or excuse me a sec, may I interject this, you know, or I'll even get you back on your point, what you are making, if I could, you know. I've had conversations with people where that exchange actually is real. I think women are better at doing that, and I'll tell you why. You'll have like two moms talking, and the kids are playing, and the kids will run in and ask moms questions, and we'll respond, and then we'll get right back to what we were talking about, you know? It's, it's kind of, it comes natural to us to be able to be interrupted or interrupt without taking offense. Although in a, like a, a formal setting, it's really not very polite and it can be considered extremely rude. And I have done that on purpose to be rude because I've had it done to me. So I do know that this is absolutely, it's not my norm. But I know it is absolutely a real thing. Narcissists love to interrupt and take your story over for their own in a conversation. And then somehow 
it makes it all about them. But nine times out of ten, it'll take it off topic. You know? What your point, what you were trying to make. And there's been times, like even with Doug, and I'll let him talk and talk what he's going to say after I made a point, but I didn't get to make the point clearly. And I'll let him talk and talk and talk and talk. Then when he's done, I'll bring him back to square one with what my point was that I was making originally. <laughs> you know? so, that's kind of a typical thing. So Then I've gotten accused of being the interrupter where it really, really isn't my nature at all because um, I just was raised to know better than that and that it actually is rude to interrupt somebody. But there are times when it could be appropriate is what I'm saying in a conversation with people that aren't offense, offended like that. If you have that kind of relationship with somebody and then you bring them back on track and then you both laugh or whatever and, and that's something you can interject your thoughts back and forth not a big deal you know that type of thing that's a, a good conversation you know so. well I'm going to get this uploaded and I'm going to put um, Professor Sam's um, listen to his qualifications this, this is not some mindless, I just got out of college type of person. This is an older gentleman, approximately my age, with concern for the whole world like that. And it is something to be concerned about. It's extremely important that the mental health community starts being honest with the whole world because the people that are wanting to make money are not being honest about all this. And Professor Sam deserves some recognition in that area because his work and his research and um, his videos are wonderful. I'm sure his book is too. I haven't read it. I've heard a lot of inserts out of it. But um, I... I I don't know that I'd trust him with my soul, but for right now, I'm given the trust of my heart in that area. And, you know, trust for another human being is a great big deal, too, because we're dealing with people's souls and their mental health here. So this isn't something that he's not taking it lately either. It's like Jordan Peterson was asked, you know, what role does he see? himself as a influencer out in the world and and what thoughts does he put into that before he speaks and he's he explained that he for like 37 years he thinks about that every time before he opens his mouth how is this going to impact another human being you know that's what the real ones are thinking about. Um, the ones that aren't, don't care how it impacts you. And that's where we come in, the real ones. And I'm asking you to share this information that is so important. I don't care how you share it, but just make it be known that these studies were done by professionals and they and the media is hiding it. These are kept secret from the whole world so they can keep trying to fool everybody, and it's very uncool. So, All right, everybody, thank you for joining me. Have a really good night or day wherever you're at. Peace and love from Pine City, Minnesota, USA.